Hello again, and I do apologize in the last video if the, the capture of my hand was very jerky. I've since optimized it so you get both the live feed and what you see on screen, this fancy picture in picture thing. Now, hopefully you can clearly see how my movements on the Space Navigator are affecting my avatar in Second Life. Let's have a look at the controls one by one. If I'm just to press the cap in any direction without twisting or turning it, this will move my avatar. I'll just click in Second Life again to make it active. Notice that when I just push forward like that, see, I'm going forward, and I can do the reverse, push there to move back. And the camera is also moving right now because you can combine these motions. See, if I twist it, and OK, I can press Escape to reset my view. But if I was just to push it, and I know it's a bit tricky, it's because it works all together, then I'm moving backwards. Just push to move forward, like that. Ooh. Go a little avatar. And left and right will move me left and right accordingly. So let's watch that. Left, I just push it, and I'm keeping it still so I don't move the, the cap all around the desk, even though it is heavy. And then push to the right, OK like that. And remember, you can combine these motions so I could twist and then I could walk forward like that. So I'm just pushing forward with my finger. And then if I want to move the camera and like that, then I just do that exact same motion. Hold it and like there. All right. So next, we want to crouch and fly. And you can do all this from the Space Navigator. Crouching is easy as pushing the button down, whether it's a finger or your palm. So I'm crouching. Flying, of course, is the opposite. You lift it up. You actually pull up on the cap. So I pull up, and here I am flying. And then push down again, exert those forces, fly, and go back down. And you can combine all these. So you can, for example, if I want to explore, let's get started. I can walk forward there. <laughs> I can do a crouch walk, too. That's pretty funny. And then I can go ahead and fly up. And then once you're flying, you can move forward again like that. Next, I'm going to show you the, another mode with this, which is using the fly cam. So let's have a, a closer look. Fly cam is really cool if you want to do cinematic camera movements, like if you're filming a movie and want some smooth pans and zooms, or if you just want to cam scan, which is the art and science of moving your camera around where your avatar isn't, like around a big shop, for example. You don't want to travel up through floors. You want to see what's up there. So even though I'm flying, I can activate the, the, the fly cam when I'm on the ground as well. And that's done by pushing this button. There's a button right here. And when I press this, little text will appear on the bottom right of the screen that says fly cam, just like that. And now that it says that, instead of moving my avatar, when I'm moving the space navigator, you'll see, you'll see that it's doing the cinematic camera motion. And I can, since this has analog feel to it, I can make it faster or slower as I so desire. And of course, these things can be tweaked in tune. I'm sort of under the water right now. It's a bit tricky to stay overhead, but let's practice some more. Ooh, it gets you back. When you reset view, it takes you back into your avatar's movement control. So I'm going to activate this again. So you can see fly cam. And then see, when I'm pushing up a little bit like that, now instead, it's going to zoom me closer. And then it's going to zoom me further away. And then twisting. It's going to look my look me down like that, I'm twisting up. It's going to look me up and then moving left and right. And then okay, keep moving. You can move through walls, you can clip through the floor, and you can go 20,000 sleeks under the ocean. <laughs> That's a quick look at that. Next up, I'm going to show you how to use the Space Navigator to interact and move objects, editing them in world as an alternative to the familiar way of using the mouse. Let's have a look. Things keep getting more wonderful, don't they? <laughs> so now I'm here to show you the third of the three modes that you can use the Space Navigator in. Remember, the three modes are, first of all, avatar motion, like that. The second one is fly cam. We're clicking that button and then using it to move the camera around. And you can think of it kind of like you're actually holding the camera and you're physically interacting 
and moving it around the world to get a better look at things. And the third mode is building. Now this will be of interest to a lot of you creative types and even if you aren't so creative or feel that you're not, I think you are, it's great because moving, building objects with the mouse and keyboard can be clunky sometimes and this can feel much more intuitive. Now, the easiest thing to remember is that when you're going into build mode, whether it's clicking the build button on here, or if you're right clicking, creating and making a new object, the space navigator will automatically switch into that mode. You don't have to push another button, which means if I were to click and there's a prim, it's rezzed, and I'm going to zoom in on it so you get a great view. I'm using the keyboard and camera controls, although I could use, of course, I could use the space navigator's own. To, to zoom in, but in this case, when an object's already selected, observe, I can use the space navigator to move the object in 3D space, like this. If I were to twist it now, oh, isn't that cool? I can use it to spin it around to get all of these. It feels a lot more natural to me already, and this is actually the first time I've ever, ever done this. There's no practice, although it's kind of going down. I want to move it up. Uh, so let's just drag it up the ground. Oh, I'm just going to pull up here and here. Just pull up. So to lift it right up and to push it down to the ground. Boo! To bury it if you want. And to, of course, retract it from that position. You can do one hand and spin it in space. And this might look kind of cool, actually, if you're showing a friend how to... how to, Because they're pretty much going to see this in real time, I think. They're going to have these object updates. And here we go, I can send a cube with my psychokinetic powers, like something out of a Philip K. Dick novel, right? I'm a psi. <laughs> so after that's all done, it's just pretty much easy. And I think you can do this with, let's do it with a more complex object. Like if I were to, uh, let's go into my inventory and let's get a car or something, uh, chibi racer. Oh, I can, that's like an avatar, yeah? part of an avatar. So there we go. Pretty cool. Thanks to Milky Unknown for making this for me. It's a favorite. So now that I'm right clicking and selecting it, now I can just edit. Oop, oop. Just go back there. And now let's watch the space navigator do its thing as I magically use my mind powers to lift the car or push it in and not just do it vertically, but I can also, of course, spin and rotate it in different directions. I can, and I can, if this was a physical object, then I can, of course, throw it at people. <laughs> hey, that might be kind of fun. Let's see. Uh, object, is it physical? Oh, can't make it. It's got more than 32 primitives. But let's have a look again at a simple cube and try to throw that. So I've made a new cube, and then uh, this is just a mad experiment, you know. It's physical. So now when it's selected, I can, I can pull it upwards. And then let's see. I would have to deselect it somehow. And I can make these, I think I could customize these to accelerate. But I'm going to push escape when it's on and see if I can throw it, in, the, in a manner of speaking. Ha 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 ha! Did you see that? It went off the side, but that's exactly what I was talking about. So here we go with the tilted car. I've used my psychic avatar powers to manipulate it in build mode. And again, you can think of this directly like you're holding the object in your hand. Let's have a, one more look at that. So I right click and I edit this. And then, actually, yeah, something's off with the centering of that. It should actually center on the object. I'm not sure why it's doing that. But anyway, now, so I've got the object selected, and then I can think of it as like I'm, I'm twisting it and looking different ways, and I'm pulling it up like that. It's probably very good for naturalistic adjustment of things, things that don't need to be mathematically snapped. You can always snap to grid after if you so desire, but in the meantime, spinny cube, let's throw it. Shoo! <laughs> oh, it just drops back down there to the ground. But that was very intriguing. A lot of fun right to be had right there. All right, so I think it's a good time for you to watch the next video tutorial where I'm going to show you more advanced customization options.